Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV. This is Keith once again, and today we're looking at Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, which has been out for a few days now, and people who are playing it are loving it. Well, as far as I can tell, anyway. There's been a fair bit of talk about performance so far, but very few sources have put together comprehensive performance reviews due to the fact that Vulkan isn't exactly the easiest API to test. We were actually getting started on our performance review, thanks to a couple of tips that we've got to resolve some issues we were having with OCAT, but we felt that this may be a more useful direction for for people. So we started our test by taking a look at a couple of options in the video settings that seem to be confusing a fair number of people, deferred rendering and GPU culling. We're not going to go very deep into these settings uh, explanations outside of making sure that everyone has a very basic understanding of what each means and what is going on with them. So we'll start off with deferred rendering. For those wanting a deeper explanation to deferred rendering, I urge you to read an article that we've got linked in the description that's within the article over there, articleception, I suppose you could say. So it's very likely that you've heard about this before, but under a name such as deferred shading. Basically, the traditional method of forward rendering pushes the pixel geometry straight through the pipeline and applies shaders all at once, just like this picture that we borrowed from gamedevelopment.com. Alternatively, deferred rendering withholds the final shaders from being applied until all pixel geometry has been processed, then later adds the shaders to the final image, just like this would show, this graph here, uh, from the same site. He does a very good job explaining this in a very simple term. GPU culling is very basic in understanding. Essentially it involves only rendering what is seen in the player's field of view. If an object is not in view or about to become in view, it is simply not rendered in the pipeline. Whether it's preemptive or hardware based, the result is the same. The pictures that we're showing on screen now from is from DirectX 12 showing culling, uh, you know, the, the visual cue versus what is no longer being rendered off screen. So testing in Vulkan is not much different from testing in DirectX 11. It just needs a different set of tools. Now utilizing a combination of OCAT and a spreadsheet developed by a friend of the site, we were able to extract the average FPS, the 1% and 0.1% lows, so that they can be charted on a graph. Now testing was done at the beginning of the New Orleans mission, where you start out outside in a fairly lighting and fog intensive area, while later moving inside. It's a short but effective and predictable testing environment, and the settings, however, were an interesting bunch as they differ slightly based on which card you use. For the test, we used the GeForce GTX 1066GB Founders Edition and the reference RX 488GB. Now, we did apply additional power limit to both cards to stabilize the clock rate so that the only variation between the test runs was the settings and not the clock fluctuating from GPU boost or power tune. We did use our X370 test bench, which has a Ryzen 7 1700 at 3.9GHz, 16 gigs of G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200, MSI X370 X-Power Gaming Titanium. GPUs, again, we've already mentioned those, and we were using the latest drivers, Radeon setting 17.10.3 and GeForce 388.13, and it was done post-patch on October 31st, 2017. Taking a first look at the baseline performance with deferred rendering off. Now this is the Ultra Preset at 1920 by 1080 This is where we'll be basing all of our baseline performance changes from. Now refer to this chart in the article or here in the video to see the delta between the settings on each card in the four charts included in this video. Something important to note here, however, is the preset has GPU culling enabled by default on Radeon cards and disabled by default on Nvidia cards. What we're exploring here, more importantly than direct comparison of the cards, is the change in performance based on these two settings. Now in the chart, that show, shown right now, deferred rendering is disabled by both cards by default for the ultra setting. Now uh, fiddling around with deferred rendering enabled, we can see by enabling the deferred rendering option, the 480 took a slight performance hit across the board while the GTX 1060 saw a reciprocating benefit on the lower end while still gaining some performance on average. Visual impact, however, was not noticeable like I had expected to see while enabling this feature. For those worried that we would not see how each card runs with deferred rendering and GPU culling disabled, since the ultra setting had GPU culling enabled in one card, and this should put you at ease. Now this is representative of both cards with neither GPU culling or deferred rendering enabled. While the GTX 1060 is relatively unchanged from the initial results, we see a measurable drop in performance for the RX 480, showing why the developer suggested enabling it for Radeon. Now let's take a look at enabling the GPU culling. Now to flip the script like what we just said, we needed to see the performance response with GPU culling enabled on both cards. It is here where we see why they recommend GPU culling disabled for Nvidia cards, since there's no added benefit. Actually, there's a slight detriment by a couple FPS. Small, 
but still measurable and no need messing with this on GeForce cards. So at the end of the day, why not do a full rundown of graphics cards performance like normally, like we normally do with this game? Easy. After seeing that this game can run on an APU, seriously, it can, albeit at low settings in 720p. If you'd like to see that, let us know because I've got everything still set up from it. Performance of this title is a non-issue and really just a measuring contest. What we wanted to do was explore a few settings that seemed to raise the most questions. I could have included asynchronous compute, but that would have just muddied the water even further because there's a lot going on here. Now if you'd like for us to dig in specifically to asynchronous compute on higher end cards to see how that plays out, let us know. And basically, at the end of the day, the developers may have left out some useful information on what these mystery settings actually do, but I do give them credit for simplifying the who needs what to do what with them. And since it's nice to see GeForce owners may be able to squeeze a little extra performance by enabling deferred rendering, Radeon owners may not want to touch any of these and just let the game fly. So this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. If you found this video entertaining or informative whatsoever, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe. If you have anything to add to the conversation, feel free to do so in the comments section. And as always, we will catch you in the next video.